बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रहमान डिजिटल प्रोडक्शन लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन दिस इज फिजिक्स एंड लेक्चर नंबर सिक्सटी एट इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी डिड क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री ऑफ एक्सरसाइज एलेवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर and question number 4 is saying what are the four main differences between boiling and evaporation we discuss those things in greater detail when we were in the theoretical portion but for your memory refreshment i wrote it so not waste your time uh what are the four main differences here i given the table in which on one side it is written boiling and on the other side it is written evaporation number one difference is boiling can occurs at a fixed temperature for example if you are taking the concept of water then water can boil on a fixed pure water i mean at 100 degrees celsius while on the other hand evaporation can take place at any temperature the second difference is that uh boiling is a quick process while uh evaporation is a slow process the third difference is that uh boiling takes place within the liquid while evaporation can take place only on the surface of the liquid similarly heat is supplied in case of evaporation by energy sources by in case of boiling you have to supply the energy by a source while in case of, of evaporation heat is supplied by the surroundings uh ladies and gentlemen that was question number 4 now we are turning our focus to question number 5 uh, and question number 5 is saying what is meant by the term latent heat of fusion of a solid so we discuss that in greater detail but again for your memory refreshment i am writing it in fact i wrote it earlier uh latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat required to change a substance from solid to liquid and vice versa but the condition is without any change in temperature and you must understand that it is denoted by capital letter l with a subscript of v that is while small uh, l is used to uh denote specific latent heat of evaporation uh one thing more its unit is joule joule is the unit of the latent heat of fusion remember that the unit of specific latent heat of fusion is joule per kilogram but in this case it is only joule uh question number 5 and part b is a numerical one so let us understand the question is saying thermal energy is supplied to a melting solid a constant rate of 2000 watt so here i am taking that p is equal to 2000 watt uh calculate the mass of the solid change so we have to calculate m 
to liquid in two minutes in liquid for two minutes we have to find that it is change in two minutes so two minutes means if i am writing t is equal to two minutes so it means that we have to convert it to second so we will multiply it by uh, 60 so it means 2 minute means 120 second that was another piece of information given to us now assume that the specific latent heat of fusion of solid is so it means that we are having lv is equal to 95000 add that is the joule per kilogram so this a uh, these are the information and remaining in the context of these information we have to find what we have to find latent specific heat so in the solution i am writing l v is equal to l v divided by m l v divided by m and l v is equal to <coughs> q yes it is q so instead of lv we can write q divided by m and we can find uh q is equal to pt so we will write pt divided by m ladies and gentlemen you know that power is equal to q divided by t so q is equal to pt and that is why i wrote this pt now if we are putting values inside it so we will get 2000 into 2000 the value of p and 120 the value of t p and t and m is uh, we have to find so i am leaving as it is now lv is given to us as 95000 so we can write 2000 multiplied by 120 divided by m so in this case we can write that m is equal to 2000 multiplied by 120 divided by 95000 and that will be in kilogram so ladies and gentlemen this will be in the kilogram and when we calculate it we are getting the value of 2.526 m is equal to 2.526 kilogram if we round it so m is equal to 2.53 kg is the answer now ladies and gentlemen we are going to do question number 6 and question number 6 is saying the diagram shows the basic components of a refrigerator system which contains a volatile liquid known as the refrigerant ladies and gentlemen i exactly copied that 
figure on the right side of your screen which is given in the book and if you remember we discuss these things in greater detail let us see what the questions are saying explain how the action of the circulating refrigerant is it passes through the freezer unit reduces the temperature of its contents ladies and gentlemen from here we will start and this pump is pushing the freon gas and it is compressing this gas to a liquid form and then it is going like this in this in these tubes in the liquid form while they are in the liquid form and passing through these fins then these fins are taking what because it is compressed so it will be hot and when it is in the liquid form these fins are dragging out heat from these tube as a result these fins are their cells becoming hot making this freon gas inside the tube as colder one when this is reaching to the ice compartment which is this one so the air inside the compartment the temperature is more greater than the freon so its vapor uh, evaporation vaporization is uh, uh, taking place here in this cabinet when this freon gas is changed to vapors it means that they are making the environment the surrounding inside this cabinet is cold and you know the density of cold air is greater than the density of the hot air so as a result that cold air is coming down to this chamber and here they are making the thing cool uh when the coldness is taken from this tube again it is in the vapor form coming again to this compressor and they are compressing it and again it is uh pushing towards the uh upper cabinet of ice cabinet in fact i should say to the uh, refrigerator ladies and gentlemen this is the process they are saying so i explain it's the first part uh what is the purpose of this pump this pump is compressing the gaseous form of freon and they are when compressed they are making it in liquid form they are in the liquid form so they are, this pump is pushing that liquid freon in the uh metal pipes and then the remaining process is taking place inside that so that is the whole story the pump is pushing the freon in liquid form in upward direction so that was the whole story about the second part the third part is saying uh explain why the 
external metal fins becoming warm while the refrigerator is in operation what is the source of this heat energy remember ladies and gentlemen i told you the whole process when this prion liquid form is reaching this cabinet ice cabinet so inside the temperature of the air is more hotter so when it is touching these pipes it means that the pipe inside that the liquid prion they are evaporating and you know from the theoretical portion that evaporation is always producing what it is always producing the coldness so as a result the cold the 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 coldness in the air is observed in the ice cabinet and when it is passing through this fins then it means they are these fins are uh doing what they are dragging heat and making this freon liquid in liquid form colder why to push it further to this location and make the things inside that cabinet as cold one so that is why the fin are becoming hotter and making these uh, pipes in which the freon is moving further becomes cold so they are dragging that cold, uh, hotness from the pipes and the fins are itself becoming hotter now this was the third part and now we are going to talk about the fourth part when a ray of when a tray of water is placed in freezer unit the temperature of the water falls from room temperature 15 degree celsius to freezing point in the uh, approximately 15 minutes the temperature from room temperature that is 15 degree celsius it is reaching to zero in 15 minutes however it is necessary to wait a further one and a half hours before the uh, before the ice becomes completely frozen yes we have to wait it is not that quick much process so explain why it is quite usual to wait such a long time for completely solid ice to form in the refrigerator yes ladies and gentlemen uh because the water inside that uh tray is a bit hotter one <clears throat> and if you remember that there was a curve like this so during this process we were they the question is asking this place when it is converting from the when it is converting from the solid to liquid in this case the thermometer is not showing any change so they are breaking the intermolecular bonds if you are taking the reverse process so during this phase those broken bonds are again they are converting it to make a solid bond and that is why 
it is taking longer because the ice crystals are forming during this time and it is not that much quick process in other words we can say that the heat is being uh, removed from the water and that is also not a quick process so it is also taking a uh, place slowly so that is why we have to wait one and a half hour to make these bond as uh is a crystals a uh, ice crystal ladies and gentlemen i am turning my focus to question number 8 The diagram below shows an experimental arrangement which can be used to determine the specific latent heat of vaporization of water as it is normal boiling point the thermometer is to check the boiling point of the liquid so uh, they were referring to this equation ladies and gentlemen these are the arrangement given in the question and you can observe it now a part is saying that uh describe how you would obtain the mass of water evaporated in a certain time you may show on the diagram any additional apparatus you would use yes ladies and gentlemen first of all whatever water is inside that container you have to take the mass of that through the balance digital balance or physical balance and you have to take that as m1 the initial mass before evaporation then turn on the stopwatch and when you turn on the stopwatch uh note the time so you have to note the time that for how much time for example for 15 minutes or as many time you want after you observe that in the flask the amount of water is reducing then measure that water and that will be the final mass now you have to subtract from m1 m2 and that will be the mass which is evaporated in this much time so first of all you have to measure the liquid then you have to measure m2 and you have to subtract from the greater mass the smaller one because m1 is greater and m2 is smaller so we are changing it and then we will subtract that value and it means that this much mass of water is evaporated number b part is saying that uh the outlet pipe becomes blocked so that the pressure inside the flask flask rises how well the reading of the thermometer shown in the diagram change state briefly a reason for your answer there is gentlemen 
when you are blocking this area of the flask it means that the pressure inside the flask will uh, uh, increase because heat is being constantly provided no stoppage of heat so it means that the thermometer will show the rise 1 degree or 2 degree in the boiling point if the situation before blocking the outlet pipe was that it was boiling at 100 degree celsius now in this case it will be 102 degree or 103 degree and if there is a boden gauge that will also show the atmospheric pressure more than 1 atm and we discussed these things in greater detail we also discussed that this principle can be used in pressure cookers so that was the whole story that pressure increase will increase the boiling point and the thermometer will show a higher boiling point than the usual one the c part is saying that a uh, state the effect of state the effect of state the effect of i am not seeing it properly the effect if not of any on the observed boiling point of using salt water instead of the pure water ladies and gentlemen this question is belonging to adding impurity and if we are adding impurities then it means that it is increasing the boiling point of that water for example if we are taking water from the sea and pure water you will observe that pure water will boil uh, uh, will boil start boiling at 100 degree celsius while that of the uh sea water it will boil at 102 103 or 104 like this so adding impurities like salt and sugar can increase the uh what increase the boiling point so ladies and gentlemen this is the case of question part number 3 uh remember that pressure cooker increases the uh boiling point of those items which we are cooking to 120 degrees celsius so as a result vegetables and meat are comparatively taking less time to be cooked now d part is the final part of this exercise it is in a particular experiment 9 g which is equal to 0.009 kg of water is evaporated when a current of 2 ampere here i am writing current of 2 ampere is pass through the heating coil for 630 second so t is equal to 630 second what else the resistance of the heating coil is resistance is 
पॉइंट जीरो ओम लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन दिस इज द साइन एंड यूनिट ऑफ कैलकुलेट द स्पेसिफिक लेटन हीट ऑफ वेपराइजेशन लेटिंग स्पेसिफिक हीट ऑफ वेपराइजेशन ऑफ वाटर एज्यूमिंग दैट नो हीट escapes from the flask so we have to find l v and that is our situation there is a gentleman we know that we have to find first l v is equal to i v t divide by m so we need v first so we are labeling it as 1 and as v is equal to i r that is a very famous ohms law and here we are putting i as 2 which is this one and r is 8 so it means that we are getting 6 volt uh now we are putting the values inside this and i is 2 v we found it 16 and t is 630 and m is given as 0.0090 when we calculate it ladies and gentlemen so it will be 224 and there are how many zeros 1 2 3 4 zeros so it means that this must joule per kilogram will be now if we are writing it we can write 2400 into 10 raised to the power 3 kilo joule uh, joule per kilogram so the final answer will be 2204 and instead of this 10 raised to the power 3 we can write kilo and it will become kilojoule per kilogram so that is the ultimate answer of this now ladies and gentlemen that's it for today tomorrow we will come with the new chapter and that chapter is also very important and that is transfer of thermal energy in which we will study conduction convection and radiation in greater detail thank you very much for watching have a nice time allah hafiz